Hello and welcome to Cretaceous Cantina, where today we're having a look at the Mattel Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom Indoraptor. This is the first Indoraptor available in the Jurassic World toy line. There is going to be what seems to be a larger electronic version coming out later in the summer. But first we have the superposable version of this new creature created for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Now the packaging you'll notice is a little bit different from those other Fallen Kingdom boxes that have the volcano. This one actually shows a uh, evening or nighttime or early morning with rain pouring down. It looks to be an alpine setting based on the trees. At the back it says that the Indoraptor has movie authentic posability, enabling you to get into various poses. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and spend a little bit of time getting this unboxed and when we come back we'll take a closer look at the Indoraptor. All right, so here is the Indoraptor out of the packaging. And I've gotten a lot of requests to do this review, so I thought, hey, now's a good time to do it. I've gotten all the major Wave 2 stuff out of the way. Let's go ahead and focus on the Indoraptor. And I've also gotten a lot of requests for the Mosasaurus. I promise that review is coming soon. But let's focus first on what's in front of us. So the Indoraptor has a gorgeous sculpt. It is very, very nicely sculpted. Just looking over the entirety of its body, uh, you can see that uh, Mattel did a really nice job with the texturing. There's a lot to be seen here. And not only that, they gave the figure a very unique paint scheme that is quite reminiscent to how this creature looked in a Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. For the most part, there are a few small differences here and there. I know that some people love the Indoraptor, some people kind of hate the Indoraptor. Uh, I'm kind of in the middle. I, I don't love it. I like the Indominus Rex better, but I don't necessarily have any reason to dislike it. It's just the angle they chose to go with for this particular film. Let's go ahead and take a close-up look at the figure, and you can see here that there is a lot of detail. There is a lot of texture, as I noted, uh, just around the entirety of the sculpt. You can see that there's a lot of little details there to be seen. Uh, here on top of the head, you get more of it there. Uh, you also have these little uh, protrusions uh, that are kind of like the Indominus here at the back of its head. These are a softer, almost like a rubbery type plastic. Um, I think it looks really good. Um, there, there's a lot to be seen. The very glossy paint scheme that, that has been applied to the figure uh, really helps to accentuate all of that sculpted detail. Uh, the only thing I would say maybe is a little bit weak here is the teeth. In the film, the Indoraptor had very sharp, very gnarly teeth, very similar to the Indominus Rex. Um, here they are very blunt and uh, I don't think that looks particularly great. Uh, if you look inside the mouth, you see that he has a reddish uh, tongue and a little bit of red there between the upper and lower jaws. Uh, I don't know if maybe that's a little bit too deep in, in the red tone, but it doesn't look terrible. It looks nice. Uh, I don't quite recall if in the film the Indoraptor had this little red streak around the eye. Uh, I guess it may have and I just forgot about it. Um, but that is notable. Uh, I also really like these red eyes, very demonic looking. That's pretty cool. Uh, for the rest of the body, you, you still get more of that great sculpting. That's what I love about this figure is that it carries through the entire body. On some of these Mattel Jurassic World toys, uh, that they're very detailed in some areas. And then when you get like to the feet or you get to the tail or even to the belly, um, they kind of lose some of that sculpted detail. It gets a little weak. Uh, in this case, they didn't do that. They, they carried through through the entire animal. And that makes me very, very pleased to see. Yeah, more of these protrusions here at the back. Again, very uh, rubbery type plastic here, very soft. And um, I, I really like what they did here. Not quite as glossy at the belly and maybe not quite as much detail there, but uh, I assume that it's pretty close to being in line with what we see in the film. Uh, there's the little Jurassic Park Facts app if you're doing that. Uh, you get the T-Rex skull emblem right there. Uh, all in all, it looks very nice. And again, this really shiny plastic really helps to bring out the sculpt. I also really like this stripe that goes alongside the body. You can see that there's some orange and then some gold. And it just kind of carries through all the way down here. And it's more orange in color back here towards the tail. Uh, you get that, of course, on the opposite side as well. And uh, almost has like a metallic coloration. Uh, not too dissimilar from the Hasbro Jurassic World Dino Hybrids. Um, uh, of course, this isn't anything like that. Um, th this looks really nice. Uh, I'm really pleased with what I am seeing here. I mean, even the arms, really creepy, really long. Look at those fingers. Uh, it's got the four fingers like the Indominus. I don't know if that's uh, supposed to be an opposable thumb, but I mean, it almost looks like it. Um, 
really quite great looking. You can't even see these joints too much. Uh, they are pretty well obscured. Uh, thankfully, they are black. They're not colored a different color, which would be kind of silly. Uh, here for the feet, you can see that it does have a uh, very long claws. You can see the sickle claw right here. It's very nice and long. And uh, the two toe claws are very long as well, kind of accentuating how scary this thing looks. And uh, the tail too. Now I will say that uh, the tail feels a little bit, maybe it's the whole figure, but in particular, like the back of the tail maybe feels a little bit sticky. And uh, when I set it away and I feel my hands, they kind of feel a little sticky. And that's kind of been the case since I took this out of the packaging. So I don't know if that's something specific to my sample or if you guys is just like that as well. Let me know in the comments if you've experienced anything like that. Um, as far as articulation goes, uh, that's where this figure really shines. Other than the aesthetics, which I think are gorgeous, uh, the figure is super articulated. And I think that's something that's gonna make a lot of collectors happy. I know that I am huge on articulation for dinosaurs. And in this case, it works really well. So here at the top of the head, of course you get the opening jaw. You can open it about that much. Very nice. He has a ball hinge here at the head. So you can kind of make it go up, go down, side to side at an angle like that. It's got a ball joint here at the neck, so you can get that down like that. You can get it up, side to side, rotate. And I am saying he because, of course, the Indoraptor is male. Uh, here at the shoulders, got ball hinges there. They rotate all the way around. At the elbows, same deal. At the wrists, same thing. Look at the movement there freaking incredible here at the hips you got insert molded joints so you can get them outward you can get them forward and back at the knees you have ball hinging so you can get them to go forward like that back rotate it here at the uh, let's call it an ankle he also has ball joints look at that that is gorgeous gorgeous amount of movement there it makes me really appreciate this uh, nothing at the toes or at the feet uh, I actually think that would have been kind of cool if you could rotate the sickle claws maybe if they were on a swivel or something that would be something but uh, you know I'm not going to be too picky here because what we got is pretty amazing here at the tail you have a ball joint so side to side up down uh, you can rotate it to an extent it does kind of seem like it gets caught so not so much going side to side not really a big deal and then here at the midpoint of the tail, you also have a ball joint, so up, down. Uh, again, it does kind of get caught like that. You can go side to side. Um, so, I mean, overall, you can get this guy into some beautiful poses. And uh, me personally, as an adult collector, I really relish the articulation. Uh, it does remind me quite a bit of uh, what Hasbro, one of the few things they did really well with Jurassic, the 2013 Allosaurus that had all the articulation that we did review here on the channel. Uh, back in 2016. This is kind of like that, but I feel like they even went uh, beyond that with all the articulation that has been incorporated into this dinosaur. Thanks to the wealth of articulation here, you can get the Indoraptor into some very dynamic poses. For example, you can get him to stand straight up just like this. You can have him walking along on all fours, which uh, is personally my favorite look for this figure. Or you can hunker him down at the front as if he's sniffing at the ground. So there's a lot you can do with this figure and that makes me exceptionally happy. All right, so now let's take some measurements. Um, I have the figure here in a neutral position. Obviously, if you have it posed differently, the measurements might be a little bit different. But here in a more neutral uh, sort of pose, from front to back, we're gonna be looking at about 15 and a half inches in length. And uh, to the top of the hip where we have those little spikes, about six inches high. Here's a comparison with one of the Owen figures from the line. Um, I cannot tell if the Indoraptor is perhaps a little bit large. Um, it doesn't seem like it's too far off. It might be pretty close to the size that it was in Fallen Kingdom, but for whatever reason, it just seems a little bit large. Not necessarily bulky, because it seems like the proportions are more or less correct, but it just seems really long, and it seems a little tall. I kind of feel like the head's a little bit big uh, when looking at it here next to Owen. I kind of feel like in the movie, maybe the head was a little bit smaller. If we bring in the battle damage blue, uh, I still feel like the Indoraptor looks a little bit big next to blue. Obviously the Indoraptor was quite a bit bigger than blue, but uh, this just seems a little bit too big. It's not off by a lot. 
I can accept it as being close enough, um, but for whatever reason, it just seems a little bit large. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there you have it. This is the Mattel Jurassic World Superposable Indoraptor. Overall, you guys, I like the figure a lot. I really love the aesthetics, even though I feel like the teeth are a little bit blunt, which is really the only negative thing I can say about the aesthetics. Uh, it otherwise looks very nice. It's got a great sculpt with very nice texturing, very nice detail. And of course, the very glossy paint scheme really helps to accentuate the sculpt and bring about all of the intricacies in the texture. The highlight for me, of course, other than how cool it looks, is all the posability. You've got super articulation here, which helps you to get the toy into a wealth of different poses. And uh, for me, that's absolutely fun because I could fiddle with this all day. <laughs> I could take it outside, take photos of it at different angles, doing different things. And that's what I love about this Indoraptor. I would love to see Mattel do a T-Rex that is super articulated like this. I would like to see them do Velociraptor Blue that is articulated in this fashion because I know that I would really enjoy it. Uh, overall, I'm very happy with the figure. Uh, other than the teeth being a little blunt, the only other thing I could say is that it does feel a little bit sticky for some reason. It kind of leaves a little bit of residue on my fingers. That could just be my figure. I don't know, but it is something I do have to mention. Um, overall, I'm very happy with the figure, and uh, if you enjoy Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, or if you just appreciate a really good, fantastical dinosaur that never existed uh, because it's a great toy, then I think you're going to enjoy this quite a bit. All right, my friends, if you've enjoyed this video, if so do like, subscribe, let me know your thoughts down below. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, subscribe to Cantina Chatter on iTunes. And if you're so inclined, we do have a Patreon page linked down below. There are different tiers you can look at. And all of those tiers give you varying levels of access to Victoria's Cantina. So I do hope that you'll check them out. As always, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to Cretaceous Cantina. Until next time, bye-bye.